Hi, I'm Marcos Ranati. I'm a student of computer science at the University of Pisa, and I'm here today to, yeah, can you hear me? Okay. I'm here today to talk about Marionette, that um, is a, okay, is a virtual natural laboratory for teaching purposes. Okay, fine. And um, Marionette allows you to virtualize a network, that's why the name, because it allows you to play with the GNU Linux distribution like they were puppets, Marionettes. It's really that easy. So let's see some major features. We got a nice and clean GUI that is uh, really unique because there are a few projects of this kind with a GUI for that I think is really important for students, especially for the first, second year students of university. And we have 100% real experience. I think that really it's, uh, I'm gonna stress this because uh, Marionette doesn't emulate the single network tools. Uh, so it doesn't emulate IF uh, config or EP tables, etc. It just emulates a machine. So what you do with the machine um, is gonna be valuable when you're gonna work on, a, on the real world, on the real machine, it's just the same. So for students, it's really uh, a good experience that we're gonna use in life. And it is written uh, entirely in OCaml, that is a strong type uh, functional language that is really cool, although not famous. So if you wanna talk about it, we can later. And of course it's open source. So it is released under the GPL version two or later license. And here is the Marionette interface. As you can see here, we got, I'm sorry I have to look, but I have to point. So um, here you can see the, on the center we have the network sketch that is uh, always up to date uh, image of the network topology. And on the left, we're gonna, we have these buttons that allow us to uh, add uh, devices. And, um, oh, sorry. Okay, with that menu, we're allowed to add, remove, and modify devices, as well as boot, suspend, or stop them. And uh, when, for example, we want to add a device, we're gonna be, presented with a menu like this, from which we can decide uh, some sort of name or label. For example, for the machine, we have the amount of memory, the number of Ethernet uh, interfaces, and uh, the Linux distribution we want to use. As of now, we support only Debian, but in future, add another distribution is not difficult, so you are welcome if you want to do that. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the other devices. Uh, we have uh, machines and uh, hub uh, switches routers and uh, cables, both uh, straightforward and crossover. And we have this uh, little cloud that is uh, a little particular. It represents an unknown network. So it can introduce some uh, sort of delays, uh, packet loss, packet duplication, but we're gonna see them later. And my favorite is the last one, that is the gateway. It is, uh, w when you plug your virtual network to uh, this word plug, you're gonna plug it to your host machines. That means that you can connect the virtual, net, vir the virtual network to a real network. That is really cool because uh, from then on, you can, um, uh, from the outside, from the real world, you're gonna see the network as, it w as if it were real. So you can give services, etc. And on the other hand, from within the virtual network, you're gonna use the internet. That means you can browse the, the web or you can use the IPT system. That means that in a matter of minutes, you can get your machine set up with your favorite software. That is really cool. And moreover, another nice trick is that you can connect a virtual network for the real network to another virtual network. I know it's tricky, but it's, it's uh, imagine the scenario, you have two students working on their virtual networks and they can interact together to, uh, I don't know, try some, some sort of attack or some sort of just client server scenario. Uh, that's really fun for students. And uh, uh, let's see. Let's see what happens when you click the to demarrer button, that is the um, start up everything. Uh, you're gonna see like uh, 25,000 pop-ups windows that uh, are gonna look like this. You, know, you have an X term for each uh, machine and you have this little LED interface for each uh, network device. That, this is really nice because uh, those LEDs that you see for each Ethernet port are not function, are non-functional. They are real, uh, they're really gonna blink each time a packet hits network, it's a network card. So it's a really valuable feedback for what's going on in your network while it is running. And okay, here we have the anomalies uh, tab that allow us for each uh, device, for each port, both inward and outward, to control the defects we, I were talking earlier. 
So we have the control on the loss, the duplication, inverse bit, and delays. As you can see there, I made an example. I configured the two machines to ping each other. And you can see there, there is a DUP, that means there is a duplication. And in the bottom, you can see that we have a 23% 20 of packet loss and an, an average time that is roughly the same as I, uh, as I said before. So here we can uh, really um, enrich the student experience with something that you don't really see often in real life. For example, I never saw a duplicate uh, stuff like that. So it's really useful for students. Okay, moreover we have the disk interface that allows you to, uh, through the disk tree, to choose uh, the snapshot of the, of the machines that you prefer. For example, you can try different configuration files for your software, be it uh, Apache or, uh, I don't know, uh, or a routing, a, routing, a routing algorithm or whatever, and you can uh, shut down the machine, boot it up, and see what changes. Well, and uh, for those of you that really can't do without graphical application, we'll, we have that, because you can, from within a virtual machine, you can uh, launch, for example, Wireshark, and it's going to use the X, uh, the X server of the host. So you can use your graphical application um, without, really, without any kind of trouble. That's really useful for students that maybe are not really comfortable with the, uh, with the terminal interface. Then we have the exam mode. The exam mode is really the only uh, feature of Marionette that is teaching specific. It allows you to present the, the students with some kind of exercise or test. And um, the, the cool thing is that when you stop the machines and, and the student save uh, his project, uh, in the machine will be triggered a script that saves uh, uh, some configuration file and is bash history file. That means that if, when, if you're a teacher, when you control and revise the exercises or the test, if the network is not working as it is, uh, maybe it's just because the, the student had bad luck with the configuration file, but he did a good job. So it can really help you to uh, understand better how it works during the test. And well, now let's simply talk about, we presented a little of Marionette, a good overview, I think. And let's see why it started. Um, as you know, every good piece of software uh, starts because uh, to scratch a developer personal itch. And uh, Jean Van Salado is the, 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 the founder of the project and the main, develop, the main developer, the leader developer. And he started that because he is a teacher of net, uh, computer networks and found some some sort of problem while teaching his classes in laboratories. For example, abnormal functioning, although they can be interesting as we saw them, they always come up in wrong times, for example, during an exams. Or you have a long time to prepare to set up the network for the students, Ex very expensive hardware, for example, Cisco stuff is not really uh, handy. Uh, you have no, the students have no way to test at home uh, the, what they learned at lessons. They can't make some uh, homework, for example. And exercises and tests are really hard to prepare and to revise after. Uh, students will always be able to exercise only a little network. You can't really have uh, 50 nodes in your laboratory. And moreover, each student uh, uh, can practice only when they have access to the lab. That, is, that means in only in certain times and only a few students at the time. All this stuff will disappear with Marionet. I mean, in a, in a matter of minutes, you can put up a network of 10 nodes and start to play with AP tables, and it's really, really easy. And it's going to be also fun. Uh, let's see where it was, uh, the project is, was done. It is, uh, it's been developed at the Leibniz Department of the University of Paris, where the servers now relies, and that supports the project. We have, uh, it was done mainly, it was started in 2005, has an interface for the NetKit project, but it developed uh, later in 2007 in, what, in the Marnet that we are know now. And uh, especially it have, uh, in six months during in the time in which Lucas Ayu joined the project, it boosted a lot. And in 2008, there was the Year of the Truth because the, the DVD was released, the live DVD was released uh, to like 200 students. So there was a major testing. And uh, other UT that are uh, kind of a university in France started to use the, use the software. 
and so we, have, we got a lot of feedback. Uh, right now, we're just cleaning up code and writing documentation and how-tos, um, but we also have some, some new ideas coming out. I personally am working on the developer documentation and the internationalization. As you saw, it's French only, so I'm not really doing a good job right now, but we had some uh, major uh, news last week, so I think in a, in a couple of weeks we're going to have Marinetti in English, French and Italian, and you're welcome to translate it in our languages as well. Okay, uh, so I'm not one of the authors, I'm just a contributor. The two authors are uh, Jean Salodo and Luca Sayo. Both are strong advocates of functional programming, that's why OCaml, and uh, uh, of free software. Uh, now let's see a little how does really Marinette work under the hood. Uh, Marinette takes advantages of a great number of free software projects. That we love free software. Uh, for the machines, we use the UML, user mode links, and that allows us to emulate both machines and routers that are nothing more than machine with a Quagga software on it. And we have the VDA project that's from Renzo Davoli that is here today and he is here at FOSDEM. And tomorrow he's going to give a lightning talk, so come and see him. And the VDA allows us to emulate cable, hubs, and switches, and implements also all the defects the, that we saw, the anomalies. Uh, then we are, there are the Marionet network parts, that is the core, and that manage all the processes that we saw, so it manages the mach both machines and cables. And there is the, the part of the GUI that is written in uh, GDK plus for the interface and in, dot, in the dot language for the network sketch that we saw. Uh, let's see the cool stuff that Marinet does. Uh, we have the dynamic reconfig reconfiguration. That's really unique. No other project of this kind allows you to dy dynamically reconfigure the networks. That means you can unplug, replug uh, cables, routers, machines, uh, shut down devices and start them up again, and you will see the, uh, the networks evolve in front of you. That's really useful and really fun. And then, given the, the big number of processes that uh, Marinet brings up, we needed to manage all this stuff. So there is um, a manager of the concurrency of all these projects, and there is also a death monitor that control that check for uh, a processes if it dies or something like that, and Marinet won't crash on you, so it's full tolerant. Then we have the hardware defects in both port and wires, as we saw earlier. We have the gateway to connect to your OS machine. We have the distribution choice, or at least we will. And we have the cow plus parts file. I don't know if you are familiar with that. It allows you, basically, it allows us to save a lot of disk space because we are talking about file, a GNU Linux distribution file system. That means uh, 300 megabytes. It's not really lightweight. And it allows us also to make the snapshot that we saw earlier. Then we have full GNU Linux binary compatibility. That means that you're working on just a GNU Linux machine, so you can just run on it whatever you like. You can install whatever you like. And that's really useful also for testing your own projects, your software. Um, then we have the graphical application support, as we saw earlier. We have the GUI that allows you to set up uh, the network. And once you started it, uh, it allows you to have some feedback on what's going on. We have the exam mode, as we saw earlier. And we have the file format that is just a tar archive compressed that is back and forth compatible. And we have Pinocchio. There is uh, a GNU Linux distribution of just 100 megabytes, so that's, that's really short. It's cool. And what we see for the future, we are currently working, working on Debian packaging that is almost done, although we have some problems, because we have some really, oh sorry, we have some really heavy stuff to package, for example, a file system, and we also rely on other software, so we're waiting for the development cycle of Woody, Woody et cetera, so it's quite complicated. We're working on machine file system to make them even smaller, and we're working on international, I am working on internationalization, or at least I'm trying, and we have, we are also in mind some advanced feature like Fulan and firewall, NAT and DCP for routers, and we're also thinking of new devices, for example, an IP phone for uh, SIP and stuff like that. So I'm done. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just uh, meet me right now. We have five minutes. If you have any questions, we can go outside. And you can also try Marinette if you wish. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you can't easily install it right now. 
there is a guide to compile it. It's really, really easy. So any question is welcome. Thank you.